Hey, 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 hey. The objective of this video is geometric settings, geometric distributions. So let's get this party started. Now we've been talking about discrete random variables. And with discrete random variables, we have said that binomial distributions is a specific type of discrete random variables. But now we're going to be talking about geometric distributions, which is an extension of a binomial distribution, which means it is a specific type of discrete random variable. But the only difference between the binomial distribution and the geometric distribution is that there is no fixed number of trials that you have to keep trying until until you pass that test and until you pass your driver's test. You know, once you've passed it, do you keep doing it? What? Why would you waste that time? Okay, so as we're looking at this, we know that we have our tens as binary or tunis, independent. But like I said, when it comes to geometric, as you see, I cross this out because there is no fixed number of trials the probability of success is going to be the same for all of them. So which takes me here, steps one through three, well, well three of the steps are the same, with the exception, again, I know I'm being redundant, you do not have a fixed number of trials. You keep working until you succeed. Which takes me to the formula. I want to do this part first because failed, you failed, you failed, you keep failing, you keep failing, you persevere, you persevere. Then finally, you succeed. So, what does that have to do with this formula right here? It's your failure to the number of times that you failed, which is one short of the time that you succeeded. Let me try that again. Okay, like as if I was to look at this one, it would be you tried a continuous, if I ignored the dot, 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 you tried four times. So with trying four times, that would be failure to the four minus one, which would be failure to the three times, because here you failed, you failed, you failed. And then that last one, you succeeded. And maybe I'll put a one there to help you understand that that's to the first power. We're going to do an example with that in a few minutes. The next question is, well, how do we find the mean or the expected value of that geometric random variable. Well, it's going to be 1 divided by the probability of success. So you have what's equivalent to a 100% chance, but it's only going to happen that percentage of the time. That's the way I look at this formula. So and this is going to give us how many it's going to take, the expected number it's going to take to succeed in a geometric, sorry about the crookedness, in a geometric distribution. So, go to your page, um, the next page, number 96. So we want to determine if the scenario um, describes a geometric setting. So you shuffle cards. Now, first of all, when you hear cards, you should think, hmm, are we putting the cards back or not? Okay, but let's keep going. We shuffle the deck of cards, and then we turn over one at a time. And here, we're waiting until we get an ace. So right here, yep, until. So maybe it's geometric. But remember, we've got to worry about all the other stuff. We've got to worry about, is it binary? Yes, you either get an ace or you don't. Is it independent? I don't know about that one here. Well, we know it's not a fixed number of trials because it's geometric because we're looking for the word until. Okay, and what's our probability for success? Well, our probability of success is to get an ace. And what are there, four aces out of 52? So that gives you 1 out of 13. So the, so you have your probability of success is going to equal 1 out of 13. But I'm taking myself back to, hmm, that's questionable. 
And the reality is, most of the time, unless they tell us to put the card, that the card's going to be replaced, we don't do it. So, I say no to the Bino. And no to the Geo specifically here. Because if they did not replace it, that means it is no longer independent. The second outcome is affected by the first. Let's keep sliding down to part B. Okay, so as I read it, we're trying to, he's going to keep shooting until he hits the bullseye. So that means, okay, maybe it's geometric. Let's go with our tens or our bends. Is it tunis or binary? Yep, he either made it or he didn't. Is it independent? Well, one shot is not affected by the other. Okay, we have, it is not a fixed number of trials, but it is until, which means, okay, it looks like it could be geo. And then what's the last one? S, your probability of success. You got a 10% chance, so it is consistent throughout. So, yeah, it looks like this situation could be or well, is geometric. So, and yes, we are assuming it's independent, but I don't see how this wouldn't be, to be honest. Okay, we're going to keep hitting it until. Now, I wanted to make up a problem. So, as you read my sloppy handwriting, what's the probability that he makes it on the fourth try? So, go ahead and pause this and write it down. Okay, so now let's see. He has a 10% a chance of hitting it, which means he has a 90% chance of not hitting it. So he failed. That's the first try. He failed. That's the second try. He failed. That's the third try. And finally succeeded. That is your fourth try. So as I said, first try failed, second try failed, third try failed, fourth try, he finally made it. So if we look at this and go into math mode for a minute, it's 0 0.9 to the third power times 0 0.1. Okay, there we go. And then if I added a part D, what is the probability? Or I shouldn't say, I said the wrong thing. What is, what is the expected number or the ex expected number of um, bullseyes it's going to take? Okay, so what does that formula say? The expected is going to be 1 divided by that probability. And that's it. And that's going to equal 10. So let's do the logic here. We're saying that 1 out of every 10, he's going to hit the bullseye. Well, what is 1 out of every 10? Exactly. It's 10%. Okay, so TTFN, ta-ta for now. Peace out.